very good morning to you. You're welcome to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. And my name is Nyangul Akadi. We're very sorry that we had to begin a little bit late, but mm -hmm. we're glad that we're here finally. And we hope that we're going to make the best use of the time that we have. Welcome to a wonderful Thursday morning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I'd like to start today's show by saying a big congratulations to the Super oh Eagles gosh. of Nigeria. I mean, the Bafana Bafana of South Africa, they really did play a hard game. But, well, I'll say fate was on the side of Nigerians. And so we are in the finals, right? Mm. And we meet up with Ivory Coast on Sunday. Mm. And we'll just see who's going to emerge winner as the giant that yeah, we I, are. I, I, Hopefully, fingers like crossed on that one. I would like Nigeria to win, but I wouldn't even mind it. If I mean, Ivory Coast yeah. wins as well, because they fought really hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was a seed the way God gave them on a platter of For gold. people who they, came as... They, they didn't even qualify. Yeah. They just... Best losers you know, best or something. Best losers. Mm -hmm. And then now they are in the finals. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I really am happy for them. But I would want Nigeria to win anyway. Yeah, well, of course, we're patriotic. So we definitely want Nigeria to win. And I mean, fingers crossed for Sunday. Let's see what happens on the left. Bafana, Bafana and South Africans spoke too early. They, they, they began having memes on, on the social media, how they would roast the that's... eagle girls and all They would say we're a generator country. <laughs> yeah, generator I country. saw so many things. I'm like, oh okay. my God, Nigeria. So now... Our, the smoke from our generator has <laughs> choked them. <laughs> so we won. There was a tweet that I saw that was so funny. The person tweeted and said, God, please, this is all we have. Football is all we have. We mm. have no light. We have no roads. We don't have, you know, the best, you know, of mm. politicians. Mm. This football is all we have. Please give us this one. And I mean, I'm happy because it seemed like it was the whole of Africa against Nigeria yesterday. Mm. Other African countries, they were trending with the, the name of Nigeria saying, you know, Nigerians are not going, Nigeria is not going to win. Um, Bafana Bafana are going to roast them. Do it for us. Mm -hmm. That's for people coming from Angola, Cameroon, mm -hmm. Ghana even. But yes, fate was on the side of the Nigerians. Yeah. And congratulations mm -hmm. to the Super Eagles. Congratulations to Juan Valier. I mean, he really did amazing yesterday and we're super proud of the Super Eagles. In spite of all the, the magic that was against Nigeria, the goal that Osiman scored, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, uh, maybe a minute later, they said, okay, the, something, there was a foul in yeah. very close to the, the goal of Nigeria, and they mm -hmm. awarded the penalty. It was abracadabra for me. But even then, we still emerged. Thank God we Thank got goodness. to the finals. And yes. Pesero, congratulations to you. Nigerians didn't like that coach. But yeah. now, at least people are talking about him and saying yes. Uh, he Maybe now he's strategy. tried and tested. Yeah, yeah. So Pesero is a good person. <laughs> <laughs> Nigerians, be patient a little bit. You know. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's get into the meat of the day. Um, let's start with our quote and just set the tone, really. Ideas are fantastic, but sometimes they're limited. And you have to pick on the energy of someone else, the brilliant ideas of the other person. And when you merge that together, it's just amazing. We, so. just, we really uh, need to know <clears throat> how, how, it, how possible it is or how to navigate these uh, trust issues that we have. Because... In great companies, you don't even have to trust the next person. You just the system has to just be in place, and you can work together. You don't need to trust. But here, everybody's afraid. If I bring my idea, someone else might steal it, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you know, one thing or the other. And uh, that's why people go solo, and then they do not succeed as much as they should succeed uh, if they come together. So maybe when we are teaching our children in our schools and all that, we should take. Uh, we should emphasize something about partnerships yes. and not just sole proprietorship. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to be solo. I, I Everybody wants to do also my, show do my like, own business yes. and all that. So let's know what it takes to have a partner and what how the contribution comes with mm -hmm. everything that needs to be known about partnership because that is a very true statement. Yeah. You cannot go it alone mm -hmm. if you want to succeed really big. I like what you said about um, schools, like teaching our kids in schools, because most times thinking about it, they give you assignments and say, you know, go and do your own assignment and submit it. And obviously, there's always a spirit of competition, which is great. I mean, it should make you strive for more. But then we should do a lot of um, teamwork mm -hmm. in the sense that you know that you have to work with other people on your team yeah. for you to be able to achieve so much. Because if you don't really do that, then when you move into the market, right, sometimes people can't work with others 
And mm-hmm. why is that? Because you know, from it when you were from yes, small, from when to, you were younger, yeah. you never really had that whole team bonding thing. You never really, you know, have teamwork. It's a skill actually. Mm-hmm. And most times on people's CVs, you know, they write it there, um, ab- ability to work with it in a team. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you really do not have that ability. <laughs> ability to work under pressure. Oh, under, under pressure. pressure. Comes mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you understand? So I think um, teamwork should be something that we all try to yeah. um, push even for our kids because it's best to learn it from there. And then, you know, you can never do it alone. Partnerships are super, super important. So you can go the distance. That these days we're talking about individuality. We were just want everybody wants to be love myself. I just want to self preservation. And a lot of things that we talk about just come to us because we are the ones voicing them. Mm-hmm. Um, the days when people were talking about loving one another uh, are gone. Everybody now wants to love themselves and all that. Alone. So, alone. So no man is an island, whether we like it or not. Mm-hmm. Someday you will need somebody. Yeah. And if you don't build that partnership, that relationship at this point, the, the tomorrow that mm-hmm. will make you need that partnership will be empty. Yeah. Those people won't be there. So I'd like to say that it's okay to love yourself, right? Yeah. Um, it's it, fine it to love yourself, but even the Holy Book would say, you know, love others as yourself. So you should love yourself. Love grows when it is shared. Mm-hmm. So love yourself, but love other people as well. Mm-hmm. You cannot live in, we cannot live in silos. We can't live alone. So you should, I mean, still love other people, mm-hmm. right? All right, let's go to our top trending stories for today. And the first one is, um, well, we have some teasers. We have Governor Ubani Sani, um, so Governor Ubasani building three vocational cities in Kaduna to export skills. Um, we have, you know, another top trend, another um, story that we're going to be looking at later on, which is Nigeria slips lower on African ICT development index, right? And then we'll be taking some um, what the what the national dailies are saying this morning in the newspapers interesting yes. headlines mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay but let's look at our top trending stories for today um the first one comes straight in with the federal high court in lagos on wednesday ordered the federal government to fix the prices of goods and petroleum products within seven days justice ambrose lewis alagua um, specifically ordered the government to fix the price of milk flour salt sugar bicycles and their spare parts matches motorcycles and their spare parts, motor vehicles and their spare parts as well as petroleum products which includes diesel, premium motor spirit, PMS and kerosene. The judge gave the order while delivering judgment in a suit filed by the human rights activist Mr. Femi Falano against the Price Control Board and the Attorney General of the Federation listed as the first and second defendants. Falano had approached the court to determine whether the virtue, whether by virtue of Section 4 of the Price Control Act, the first respondent was carrying on carrying out his duties to impose a price on any goods that are of the kind specified in the first schedule to Price Control Act. At the hearing of the case on Wednesday, the plaintiff Falano informed the court that the motion on notice was premised on Section 4. One subsection one of the Price Control Act laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. He also told the court that the defendants in the suit have been served with the processes since it was filed in May 2023, but refused and failed to file any response to counter it. Falano consequently urged the court to grant all the relief sought since there is no counter from the respondents. Justice, Justice Lewis Alagua. After listening to Falano's submission, observed that the respondents did not file any counter to the suit. The judge cited decided cases and held that all the reliefs contained in the motion paper are hereby granted as prayed. Falano, in the affidavits in support of the motion dispo- deposed to by a lawyer in his chambers, Taiwo E. Olawale, stated that the first defendant, the Price Control Board, was established by the Price Control Act and it is saddled with the responsibility to fix a price on goods to stabilize the general price level, prevention of hoarding of goods, protection of customers from exorbitant prices, among others. The second defendant was the chief law officer of the country. He also stated that the plaintiff has been involved in the defense and promotion of human rights in Africa for over three decades. And on that account of his human rights works, the plaintiff has been honored by many local and international organizations. The defendant averred that on January 3, 2023, he was informed by the plaintiff that the following commodities are listed in the Price Control Act, bicycles and spare parts, 
flour, matches, milk, motorcycles and spare parts, motor vehicles and spare parts, petroleum products, salt and sugar. Well, yeah, that is it for um, that story. So yeah, well, it just tells you, even if it's, uh, the law, if the act is uh, they are quoting 2004, it just shows you that how old that law is mm -hmm. and it needed to be renewed before this time. But as it is, some laws That's in the constitution years. or in the acts that we are having, it, it, how do you talk about hardship in Nigeria and you're talking about matches? and bicycles uh, that's what people, people are using now how many people use matches bicycles and all that it, it, it took it well that is what is available mm -hmm. in the act i'm not saying that it is bad but that's what is available and that is the only way falano could have argued that yes. so he had to go to the relevant section of that act so I, i'm not saying he shouldn't have argued it i'm, I'm saying that if they had updated those laws mm -hmm. possibly a lot of other to the things, current commodities yeah, that a lot we of other now. things could have been included. Mm -hmm. You're talking about bicycle, uh, bicycles and spare parts, matches, and you know, you well, know, there's PMS there. Yes, there's, there's PMS. Uh, that's the I'm thankful for there's the fact flour, that there's PMS. Flour, milk, sugar, salt. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyway, but I do hope that um, this should be uh, there should be a good response to this. Maybe not a hundred percent, but the government should show that they are concerned and they didn't need to be taken to court first before they do all these right. things that they're supposed to do but here we are mm -hmm. they are in court and the just judgment is against them so let's see what the government is going to do so i understand where this is coming from as well because most times um all of you know the sellers right now um they try to take advantage of the situation and fine we know that dollar is crazy right now some of them have to import these things mm. but then they take advantage of the situation by you know hiking the price so high just because they feel oh i need more money um when i want to restock and dollar might you know go up even more but then you're anticipating something that hasn't even, even happened yet and you can't be charging people people have not been able to even buy what is available yet people have not been able to feed and then you're making the prices so high if you go to the market right now maybe you buy like a bowl of tom tomatoes for about 3,000 naira before. You go the next day, they're already telling you that, you know, it is 4,000 naira. Guess what? It is the same tomatoes that they bought some days ago. So it's not like maybe there is a price update because they've gone to the market. But if, well, that's demand and supply. Well, but if they just say that people are coming for this thing, they just hike the price and it's ridiculous. I mean, pity us now, please. Yes, before now, I, I used to be very mad at the people who take advantage and want to exploit people. But now, I don't even know what to say. For instance, a friend of mine sells ring lights. Okay. And um, like a week ago, the ring light that she was selling for 80,000 Naira, uh, she now packaged everything, Valentine's Day package and all that, and gave some uh, freebies if you buy this thing. Mm. That same light right now mm. is, when she went to the market the next week, is 120 in the market mm. when she was selling for 80. 80. So imagine how much she was buying. So now it's 120. So when you're selling now, you don't even know what the market will be like when mm -hmm. you go tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So people are now selling in anticipation yeah. of a crazy price that might come when they want to go back to the market. So if I'm selling for 80,000 now because I bought it for 70,000 and I go to the market and it's 120, you know that I will not be able to buy more than one. Mm -hmm. All my in fact That's I, like money for I will even look for more two. money mm -hmm. to go and buy one of this uh, this unit. So I don't know how to blame them, you know. But again, like you said, it, they should have a human face when it is avoidable. Let, mm -hmm. let them not move the just, prices just as crazy have mercy. as that. That's my own. Have mm -hmm. mercy. Have mercy because, I mean, when it comes to like food produce, most of our perishable goods are produced here. Mm -hmm. It's just maybe it's a few stuff like apples and but some other things that we... But we sell these things to buy things, other things that are important, you see? That's I, the I problem. Know that, I know they That's go why they would say hand. the landlord can up the rent because he built the house to take care of his family. And so if everything else goes up, even if he built the house in 1940, he will still need to <laughs> use the rents to buy other things and, you know, feed his family. But my problem hmm. is with the federal government that is replying people who are complaining that things are not that bad. That they, they in fact, they, I have no somebody comments. was arrested in Mina for leading the protest, and they are now saying it's opposition parties. Hey, what kind of opposition is that? Have you been Everybody's to the market? <laughs> in fact, 
even our next story, there's another protest that has broken out on the streets of Suleja in Niger State, the same Niger State, over the rising cost of living. This is coming two days after protesters stormed the streets of Mina, the Niger State capital. Suleja is just a few kilometers away from the federal capital territory, FCT Abuja. The protesters called on President Bola Tinubu to end the hardship because they were suffering. They could be seen displaying placards with inscriptions reading things like, Tinubu, do something now. Leadership is all about improving lives. Nigerians are suffering. Stop the hardship now, among others. A group of women had blocked the Mina Bida Road at the popular uh, Pakongu Roundabout Express and uh, their grievances over the rising cost of food items was the case. People traveling to major cities in the south such as Lagos and Ibadan, among others, were held hostage for hours due to the protest which started as early as 7 a.m. The women were later joined by men and youths who accused government of turning deaf ears to their plights. Neither the thick smoke of the tear gas, uh, the sound of the gunshots fired by police operatives to disperse them, nor the plea by the deputy governor of the state, Yakubu Garba, who went to the scene of the protest, calmed the protest. So you see, uh, this, this hmm. when the federal government keeps saying, keeps saying it's opposition, is opposition, we've been saying it on this program, that we are now having pockets of protests here and mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. If these protests all merge, we may not be able to contain them. The other day I saw a video where a man went to the market, was it with 5,000 or so, he couldn't buy anything and he started crying. A full-grown man with children at home, with a wife at because home. Because he knows he has he people could, to feed. He couldn't buy anything and he started crying. And it was recorded, it was on the social media and you know, some people who <laughs> campaign for this government are coming out to, to apologize. To apologize, some of them to say unprintable things about this government and all that. It should tell the government that something somewhere is wrong. The truth is, people are really, really living in hardship. Like when you see the way people are suffering. I mean, some of us might be lucky or fortunate to still have clothes on our backs, still have food on our table, um, still have shelter. But there are lots of people that they have responsibilities and they cannot meet them with the monies that they have because you're not making so much. And even the little that you have is almost worth nothing. Every single day, the dollar is depreciating. So what do you do? But my question now is, I know that these protests are happening um, in places like Mina, now that um, two protests have just come up. But what can the government do instantly to start to alleviate, you know, the sufferings of Nigerians? Like, And you are the one asking that. The government arrested a woman and said she led the protest. How do you arrest someone who is telling you I'm well, suffering? Well, you should start to do something. That's, That's the first thing they did. Arrest somebody. <laughs> so it's almost like, how it's dare funny. you? How dare you, how say, dare you say anything that you're suffering? So it's almost like you're beating, you're beating the baby and telling the baby not to cry. And then the federal government came out and said that uh, the cost of living in Nigeria is better than, way better than any other part of Africa. Really? And so, at, you know, you'll just be looking at it and you expect people not to protest. It's ridiculous. Anyways, let's move over to our final story. The federal government has reiterated its commitment to tackling insecurity across the country with renewed vigor in the various counterinsurgency operations. The Vice President Kashim Shetima made this commitment during the induction of T-129 attack combat helicopter and B Craft King Air 360ER at the airbase in Makodi, the Benue State capital, along with a cargo plane to support air power operations and the fight against insurgency. The Vice President said the induction is one of the many unwavering resolve by the federal government to combat insecurity plaguing the country. He proceeded to induct the fighter jets amid cheers as the combat T-129 attack helicopter in a sequence of a mock operation displays its capabilities in and air agility. The governor of Benue State, Hyacinth since earlier, commended the federal government and expresses the hope for increased impetus against violent crimes and insurgency. The Speaker of the House of Rep Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, led members of the National Assembly to the historic induction ceremony to show solidarity. Um, well, insurgency and insecurity is something that we've you know, spoken about extensively on this, on this show. And I mean, if they're doing something about it, yes, I would commend the federal government. But still, I know we're going there and you know, showing all of these things. I just don't want it to be PR 
I don't want it to be photo op. I want you to actually do something. I want you to actually secure the lives and properties of Nigerians. We can see all of these things like, yes, you're trying your best. But how about people in the remote villages that are going there and getting killed in the middle of the night? And then for hours, they perpetrate such evil and no, you know, military force, no police force, nobody is really showing up and securing these people's lives. So, I mean, I'm happy that you're getting all of these jets and you're doing whatever you're doing, but we need to, let me just say this, show workings. That's Security what. is not all about buying jets and yes, all that. Even those not. jets are the, the same jets that have been bombing innocent people here in Nigeria and I've not heard anything about it anymore. Nobody has lost his job, nobody mm -hmm, has mm -hmm. been uh, imprisoned or something. People in their hundreds were bombed in the village and those were not insurgents. So we'll be asking ourselves are the jets are going to do something positive for us or they are going to use them to kill us again and all that. So. I'm not saying it is a bad thing, mm -hmm. but what I'm saying is that no security, no intelligence succeeds without the people. They yeah. are the ones that will give you the credible intelligence that will make you uh, be able to fight whatever insurgency or not. But if you, the people are not happy with you, they, are, they don't trust you, then whatever you're doing is for naught. So government should try to build that trust. Security um, agencies should try to build this trust and all that so that the people will work in sync with them. Because these criminals, a lot of them are known by the people. But you, mm -hmm. you know the re repercussion of even reporting some of these people. Hmm. You don't know how much um, anonymity you will have. Yes. You might report and you, you are thinking that what if the person I'm reporting to is also part of, part of, of these them. people, mm -hmm. you know. So all of these things come into play and that's why insecurity is like it is in Nigeria. So let them, let them, let them try to flush out the bad eggs, let them try to build confidence in the people, in the security agencies and we can be sure of a better uh, society. So yeah. when we buy jets and buy jets and buy jets, I'm glad that the House of Representatives, the Senate, all that, they're having a series of meetings with the security chiefs to find out what is happening. I'm sure they're beginning to know that as a big man, if you interlock your compound and leave the surroundings mm -hmm. untied, the dust from the streets will always we'll enter your home. Yes, as well. So let them know that. All right, this is where we have to end this segment. We're going to go on a quick break, look at what the weather is, and when we return, we'll be looking at the national dailies this morning. Please stay with us.